Hey guys, welcome back. We're on episode four now of the DAX Anti Patterns with Daniel. Uh, once again, I'm excited to kind of dive into some new topics and explore some stuff that Daniel's prepared in advance, where I kind of get to be both an observer and a participant and provide some new and fresh opinions to uh, things that we get to go over for the first time together. So I'm really excited to, to do that. And Daniel, can you fill me in a little bit on what we'll be going over in this episode? Yep. Today, we're going to cover ways. Uh, that you can um, uh, use to arrive at uh, year and month uh, values, such as uh, what you see on the screen. Uh, so you can see um, uh, there is a year month value, like year and then month. And there are several ways to arrive at this result. So we'll cover uh, the bad ways, I guess, mm -hmm. the bad way and uh, several uh, good ones. So here's the formula for the bad way. What are your thoughts, okay. Reid? All right. So it looks like, I mean, th this is essentially month and year. It, it's the date at a, at a month and year level we have at the top. It is a text data type, okay, converted to that. And it seems like at least for related to maybe sorting or something else, it, it has been brought in where they're trying to keep a consistent six digits because they are doing a, uh, a logic check. Basically, when, the, when month and year is nine, between one and nine, um, it, you add, you're adding a zero, uh, a leading zero to it. Otherwise, it's just returning that. Uh, with any of these, there's usually repeated bat patterns that you're, you're looking for. So month and year is declared three times. So at a minimum, you know, it probably won't do much for performance, but it will shorten the, uh, the code a little bit. You could declare a variable for sure, you know, at, uh, for month and year, and then at, least at a minimum reference that. But I'm sure there's a way to simplify the logic here uh, a little bit as well. Yeah. Uh, now, this is text, like read correctly, observe, because mm -hmm. uh, if you look at line three, we've got this ampersand here. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you use an ampersand between two numbers, then the result will be text. Yep. Uh, by the way, notice how the author of the formula used the ampersand on line three and then concatenate on line five. It's doing the same thing. And yet, <laughs> within the same formula, the author used two different ways to arrive at this same result. So it reminds me of like sure using why. a uh, like a switch statement with an if statement, which like there are some times where you actually need like a nested if inside of a switch, but it's when you kind of mix yeah. the two of them together, it, it gets a bit logically confusing, even though it, I'm sure it executes fine. Uh, it's like kind of pick a road, don't, don't go down both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I personally prefer ampersands for two reasons. First, they are shorter. Second, if you need to combine more than two pieces, then concatenate won't do much good because it can only accept two arguments, as far as I know, unless they change something. Nope, that's still the case. You would need like a so concatenate you to... X or you know some other type of fancy advanced uh, function to do the equivalent of it. A very simple uh, ampersand, as you mentioned. Yeah, and yeah, it's just not worth it. Just use the ampersand, right? Yeah. So yeah, there is a shorter way to arrive at the same result. Like if we want to keep it as text, uh, just strictly equivalent, uh, that's the format function. Mm -hmm. The format function will take um, a value, in this case, a date. And then when we provide a format string, it will give us the format that we want. So let me show you the good example, one of, one of them. Here, see how much shorter this is, right? Let me just add that to the table visual. This is so much shorter. Mm -hmm. Now you can see I'm using four Ys for the year, right? And then I'm using two Ms. This yep. is to make sure that we have two digits no matter what. And just to illustrate this point, let me do another line here. And we're going to do and um, format. And then let's do two. And then the format is going to be like this. Now, when I accept this, um, select this uh, tick box, then I expect to have extra four digits and the last one will be two. So you can see two is now formatted, not just as two as text, but as four mm -hmm. digits. And then if I had a different number, it would still be four digits. Unless yeah, cause, uh, cause the, the, the number the, was very good. The trailing zero basically represents the, the two in, in that format string. And then the, anything up before that is the extra added ones to basically arrive at that like 
text output. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I think if the number is large though, <laughs> it might not work this way. Yeah. See? But it because is, yeah, because the, the number that you're formatting is longer than the format string, so there's no places to insert extra zeros at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, the format function will give you the same result with just one function call. Mm. Compare this to what one, two, three, four, five, exactly. six function calls. Much better. Now, if we are not fixed on having text, if we're okay with numbers, there is a different way. Let me show you the second example. And you can multiply year by 100 and add a month. And that's a pretty standard way of um, converting dates to integers in the world of data warehouses and whatnot. If you wanted a date as an integer, you would just multiply year by 10,000, then multiply month by 100, and then add the day of the date. So pretty standard. If I yep. add that, then you can see it's a number, not just because it says whole number at the top, but because it's aligned to the right. And by default, numbers are aligned to the right. And I will say like that, that for, for people who do come from a background where they, they kind of understand the, the typical equations that you can do to generate certain unique date fields, this works very well. And it's, it's the, probably the cleanest way to write it as far as the effort that it takes for the model to produce that. Uh, I will say as a devil's advocate, there is for people who are very used to like ex, uh, Excel formatting functions and using the format option like uh, in Excel to like to format the date a thousand different ways. Uh, even though the format does export to text, you can, if you like were to click on example number one and just uh, use that drop down, it does give you an option to still convert that to a number if you wanted to. Uh, exactly. And you'll see yeah. it shift from uh, like from left to right. My one, my one caveat on this is technically it's not like fully optimized for modeling because you are taking a, a date, converting it to text, then converting it to a number. It's uh, kind of a three, a, a two step process for that versus simply just taking date and converting it to an integer. Uh, but this will still at least give you a similar output. So my, my thing to that is just depending on where you're most familiar and how your brain works to, to get an output, either of these options will allow you to, to arrive at a number, which is probably what you're going to want to sort. Uh, but it, you've seen two different ways to convert a date to a month, year, consistent six digit level. Yep. And uh, in case uh, you need this number to be as part of some other formula and you cannot select the uh, column data type uh, because it's part of a different formula, then mm -hmm. uh, you could use the value function um, over this like this. It will convert text to a number, or you can also use the convert function like this. You'll just need to provide uh, the data type, and uh, that's integer, so it's uh, the same thing. Uh, but yeah, if you just have a column like this and you want it to be a number, then you might use this drop down, mm -hmm. like Reed suggested. Exactly. It okay. gets many, many different uh, paths to home, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the end, Reed, do you use columns of uh, this type much, like uh, even if they're integers, year, month? Not for display, only for sorting. So what I normally have is uh, I'll usually have like Jan and then hyphen 18. Like I'll have a short month and year value uh, occasionally to show as like text on a, if I want a, a small, clean, concise axis at the month and year level uh, potentially. And then this will yeah. be what I sort that by because otherwise it's you know going to be alphabetical and it, it's going to look a bit wonky that way. Yeah, I don't really like these columns much. I'll show you why. So let me use this example. By the way, let me use text first. Actually, no, it's not text, is it? It's whole number. Yes, let me put it back to text. And I'm going to use an implicit measure, even though it's not best practice, but it's just for illustration purposes. So we've got counts of uh, dates. See, it's uh, <laughs> not that great, uh, I guess. Because I need it's to a, sort it's, the axis. Yeah, it's, well, it's also displayed by categorical, not continuous for the axis type. Because you can only do that on date yeah. data types. Yeah. Yeah, or numbers. Uh, but, but yeah, you're right. Or so numbers, axis, yeah. Uh, like this. OK. Yeah, still, it, it's not good. Now, if I use numbers here, yes, now it's continuous, except it's ridiculous. 
<laughs> because <laughs> our months only go up to 12. And then there is something like 2018, 13, 14, 50, 60 that the axis expects, but it's not there because there are no such month numbers, right? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. It waits all the way to zero one and mm -hmm. then continues. So it looks ridiculous. So what you can do is you can do what Reed is doing. You can have another column with a month and a year as text, and then use this column as a sort sorting column. Now, I like a different way, actually. Let me show you. I like dates. Uh, you yeah. can use one function call, EO month. Let me put that. Isn't this much better? I've used similarly with start of month, but yeah. Uh, so what what do you uh, what makes you choose the end versus the start of the month? Oh, nothing in particular here. Uh, and I think I know why you're asking this. I was actually going to cover that as well. So <laughs> very good. Yeah. Now, I just wanted to say for viewers who are not accustomed to uh, this kind of, um, you know, columns. Now, why do I like this? Because first, you don't have to sort it because it's already sorted. It's a date. Second, mm -hmm. you can use your own format strings here. So this is a standard one. Like you can use a, a drop down and uh, use one of the standard ones. Now, if you want it, you could also provide your own like this. The only problem is that the axis will remain in the same format. So we don't control that. However, if you hover over, in the tooltip, you will see the desire, desired format. That's nice. Yeah. So now, Reed was asking, why do I prefer end of month and not start of month? What about you? Uh, you, you tell me first. Yeah, I mean, so um, I, I just like the, the periods to be consistently in the same time window. So like at least start of month, it's always going to be the first. It's January 1st, February 1st, that, you know, as, as a date data type versus the, um, the end of months, which especially if you're doing anything that might be looking at uh, pr prior versus um, future periods, there's a, there's a chance that if it's looking at different date numbers or ranges, it might, uh, it might gunk up some stuff that I've seen in like time intelligence. So I've just found it, I've at least seen it easier to use start of month because at least it's consistent in the, that number uh, does not change uh, in the date conversion. Okay, okay, so that's not what I thought. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, th that's a good point, by the way. Uh, because at least uh, the, the day number is always the same. So that, that's yep. true, it's consistent. Mm -hmm. Although it goes against uh, the, the grain, as in in data warehousing, like uh, more experienced people would probably use end of um, month just because it's the convention. But that's not why I used end of okay. month. I wanted to make a point. So let me change the date range to something like uh, this. Um, no, make, maybe actually... A, Oh, and part of it too is they, like it, it looks a little weird is if you're if you select the end of the uh, if you you have that value onto here uh 131 is what you need to select technically for january even yeah. though if you want if you want start of the month you have to select the end of the month and most people want to start from the beginning of the month yeah you're right yeah and there's one more thing you need to be aware of uh, let me just try to capture that okay I think it's sufficiently a short. Okay, okay, that's excellent. So, you see, there is March, mm -hmm. right? But then when I hover over it, it's February. Oh, interesting. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that weird? It, it, it's actually a common complaint in cases like this when people do pay attention to the axis and the values. And they're like, why? Why does the axis say March and the tooltip says, February, for example. <laughs> so, uh, do you know how they fix it? Uh, like this is the first time I've actually seen this one. So, but again, because I always use start a month. So, like, I'm, I'm curious of the, re the okay. result for yeah, the fix for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, because you use start of month, you don't notice this issue. Yeah. Here's what what's going on. So, in the tooltip, we've got the date, and that's the end of month. So, it's 28th of uh, February, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the axis. It's automatic, we don't control it, but it starts at the start of month. And because the 1st of March is very, very close to the end of February, they appear to be the same. <laughs> so gotcha. let's do start of month. So we can do minus one for previous month and 
add one. <laughs> now it's gonna shift. So March mm -hmm. is March and February is February. Now, um, just one uh, fine point here. I'm using EO month simply because I like scalar values in my columns. Now, Reed suggested you can use start of month, which uh, works, uh, it does uh, the job. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's a table function, and I right. guess I'm a purist, so I like uh, to use scalar functions. Yep, and it, it, there, are, there are a lot more necessary, certainly in measures, for sure. Uh, not nearly as impactful with, with like a column when the only time this data ever gets refreshed is you know a, a scheduled refresh uh, com commonly once it's published to the service. Yeah, yeah, the performance difference is negligible. It, yeah, it's yeah. just a matter of taste, I guess, here. <laughs> it, well, yeah, uh, but it, 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 it is a lot more less negligible, though, in, in a measure. Like a scalar versus table function, depending on what you're using, can actually have a big performance impact. Uh, there's a couple of good SQL BI articles on that of, like, depending on the measures you're writing yeah. and how you're using it, careful of which type of date function you're using, because one can yeah. be, like, two, three times slower, uh, just because it requires, you know, to build a table can they convert to a scalar, you know, and, and a bunch of other stuff in the back end? Yeah, that's right. So that's all I wanted to uh, show for uh, today. Yeah. I hope you found it useful. Well, I think the good takeaway really is is the is just the fact that whenever possible for for dates, um, using a continuous. And can you actually uh, can you close back out of this? So click back um, to to reduce the chart to like a normal size. Go to the format painter um, just so they can see what type of axis this is. So if you go to the X. Right now it's continuous, so there's two two data types that this can be applied to, which is dates um, or numbers. If it's text, it can only ever be categorical, and change it to that, you'll see how much like how much worse it looks uh, on there. So if we, just just to show them, yeah. Uh, so like it show it it has to physically show every label, and then you get the scroll bar because it can only sh compact so much. Continuous because it yeah. assumes you know we all understand the universal logic behind dates go in chronological mm -hmm. order. Um, so to, like numbers also go in order of ascending and descending. So it, it, it doesn't have to show every label because it knows you can get the rest of those on a tooltip. So I always encourage clients, like whenever possible, use a date data type because it will display a lot more values in a much more compact and easy to read form um, on, the, on the axis when you have that. So um, good, I think good insights that kind of led up to, from a visual perspective, what displays better in a, in a, in a graph or chart. Uh, Daniel, thanks for doing all this today. I think this was a really good one. Um, anytime date conversations come up, I think there's a lot of uh, good insights and different perspectives that people had. So this is definitely, uh, this was a fun one to to hang out with. And also I learned a little bit more about why people use the EOM uh, in a month function versus start. Um, I know there's some database considerations for that. So thank you for sharing. Yep, great. All Thanks right, until next time. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.